You are now listening to the Griot's Black Podcast Network, Black Culture Amplified. Why do black people like clothes so much? And you know clothes have a special place in the black community. And so we're going to talk about that today. Welcome to the Griot Daily, the only podcast that can give you the definitive ranking of black clothes. I'm Michael Harriet, world famous white peopleologist, and this is the Grio Daily. You ever seen a white person with Air Force Ones that look ratty, look like they've been kicking rocks and and playing, you know, charcoal soccer in them all day versus somebody at the club with a fresh pair of ones on? See, that's the difference between black clothes and white clothes. They're the same shoes. But sometimes when black people wear certain things, they are automatically transformed to becoming black clothes. Since the first human decided that it was a little chilly outside and put together a dope three-piece woolly mammoth fur outfit, black people have been at the forefront of fashion. Looking cool is part of our expression and our creativity. So it's only natural that we created our own cultural dress. Now, everybody got, you know, different kinds of styles, but there are a few accepted norms that extend across black culture, including what we're going to talk about today. Categories of clothes. Now, we've seen someone who was at the club who was clearly wearing, y'all know y'all seen this, church clothes or someone at Sunday morning worship who was sporting a going out outfit. See, we know it when we see it. So we're going to help you with this by ranking the definitive categories and the different categories of black wearables, you know, black clothes, from the highest to the lowest on the scale of importance. Now, unlike, you know, how people do it on those white TV shows, we don't start at number 10. We start with number one. At number one, we have church clothes because the highest ranking of black clothes everybody agrees it's church clothes, right? It's the highest on the category of black fashion because in spite of the name, church clothes really don't have anything to do with church. The list of places you can wear church clothes include job interviews, funerals, court, and all 50th birthday parties are mandatory church clothes events. See, comedian Steve Harvey was one of the first entrepreneurs to take advantage of the church clothes phenomenon when he introduced his line of 62 button church suits. Because people now wear anything to church now, it's unlikely to even find somewhere where you, people wear church clothes to actual church, but it's still church clothes, you know, unless it is the pastor's anniversary or another special occasion when the choir march in. The Easter suit is the highest class of church clothes, although niggas in Detroit are known for their all occasion Easter outfits. They will wear Easter suits to a construction job, but church shoes are the anchor of the church clothes. But see, they must be hard bottoms. Stacey Adams was one of the founding fathers of the hard bottom movement, and he still reigns supreme to this very day. A pair of Stacey Adams is basically the red bottom of church wear. In fact, I urged him to take advantage of the popularity of Cardi B's Bodak Yellow by changing his slogan to, these is Spencer shoes, these is Stacey Adams, these is Jesus shoes, but you know, he wouldn't take my email, right? So number two is outfits, right? Like. Outfits are their own category, whether it's a Beyonce concert, a date, or a cookout. Outfits are a collection of clothes that's selected in advance for a special occasion. And most often they include multiple pieces. The only way to preserve an outfit is to hang it on the back of a chair or to lay it on the bed until the special day arrives. And when you wear it, the outfit is generally taken to the dry cleaners even if it's machine washable. Everybody knows that there's some things, special outfits that you just can't put in the washing machine. You gotta iron it on the bed. And the highest level of outfits are worn by people who attend historically black colleges. Like if you went to an HBCU, you definitely know what an outfit is, right? Although church clothes technically come in higher ranked, a homecoming outfit actually outranks an Easter suit. And there is no greater class of clothes than a uh, outfit that you wear to a classic. Now, number three is going out clothes. Going out clothes, they accentuate the physical characteristics of the person and they 
you know, emphasize the person's self-esteem. They're typically worn on dates. Sometimes you can wear them to a nightclub and wherever a person thinks they might run into their ex-boyfriend or girlfriend, right? Y'all know y'all wear, you know, these going out clothes. Everybody got a special going out shirt. And women choose their going out clothes based on how it looks in a full-length mirror in a retail store's dressing room. But unbeknownst to most women, they also choose men's going out clothes. Because anytime a woman tells a man, I like them shoes, that automatically elevates it to going out shoes, right? And it's just how it works, right? It's an informal diagnosis. Only women can elevate something from a church or an outfit to going out clothes. And every man got a special going out shirt, a special going out pants. And the highest class of going out stuff is, you know, I'm sorry if this offends some people, but the titty dress. I mean, I didn't come up with the name, but according to people who I spoke to on the condition of anonymity, a girl named Tanzania McIntyre. Okay. She says that every woman has a dress that makes her breasts look like they got out eight hours of sleep and had a nice, healthy breakfast. The category is not limited to dresses. My source also says that every woman has a pair of jeans that makes her booty look like she does 200 squats every night. I'm telling you, going out clothes is number three for a reason. And then number four is school clothes. Again, this has nothing to do with the education system in general. School clothes can range from jeans and t-shirts to button-ups and khakis, and they are worn every day in public. And even if you don't go to school, you got school clothes. Like most adults wear school clothes to work. A lot of churches are, allow people to wear school clothes to service, but not at my church. We got a dress code. Like the deacons won't let you in wearing jeans or rubber sole shoes unless they're white, have thick soles, or you are a board-certified usher. But school clothes are very important because even when a teenager wears an outfit or church clothes to schools on picture day, they do not cross over to becoming school clothes. The only exception to this rule is that under certain circumstances, an ensemble worn on the first day of school can be classified as an outfit, making the first day of school outfit the top level of school clothes. White people wear school clothes everywhere. Like they wear them to church, they wear them to, you know, bar mitzvahs, they wear them everywhere. And number five is casual clothes. Now, I don't really know what this means because every time I see something that says, you know, dress casual, I don't understand what that means. How the hell do I dress casual? How the hell does a place that I go have an attitude? And even though it's difficult to define, 90% of all women will wear a jean jacket over casual clothes. And Casual clothes are, especially when it relates to women's, they're typified by pockets. I don't know why, but women love when they casual clothes have pockets and they will mention it like the designer discovered a new chemical element. Oh, look at this dress. Mm, it's got, look at the pockets. And for men, the linen short set is the highest level of casual clothes, while the sundress for women is the highest level of casual clothes. At number six, we have work clothes. Okay. Now this category might be slightly misleading also because it has less to do with your place of employment than it has to do with your dress habits, right? See, work clothes, they include Dickies, McDonald's t-shirts, police uniforms, and anything that a person wouldn't wear if they weren't at their job. For instance, a pair of black Reeboks are work clothes for all security guards and people who work at Applebee's. But they are also school clothes for people who live in 1989. In fact, most people wear school clothes to work unless, of course, they work in a high level position like a lawyer, senator, news anchor or pimp, in which case they wear church clothes. And the highest level of work clothes for any profession is indicated by the adornment of the neck. The crew chief at McDonald's gets to wear a neck scarf. The supervisor at the auto parts store wears a necktie. The officer in charge of murder investigations, he wears a badge around his neck. And the manager at Walgreens, they wear a lanyard to swipe so the cashier can avoid your order. And, and in all black high schools, all black principals must wear a bow tie. I mean, it's the law. Coming in at number seven is play clothes. See, they also call outside clothes. This, Category is self-explanatory. The worst cardinal sin in the black community is to have your mama catch you outside playing in your school clothes. Oh boy, I can't tell you the number of people who've gotten whippings because they didn't have their outside clothes on. And when you become an adult, see your play clothes becomes 
house clothes. And according to the National Association of Play Clothes, 82% of play clothes are actually pieces of apparel that have been retired from the school clothes rotation. Therefore, all school clothes are eligible to become play clothes. And this is the important part. If they are comfortable enough to take a nap in. See, you got to test your play clothes out by laying on the couch or seeing how fast you can run in, in them, right? See, but that applies to everything except church clothes. Church clothes can never become play clothes. The last one, finally, is scrubs. I'm gonna just be honest. I'm low key jealous of nurses and all people who get to wear scrubs to work. They look comfortable as fuck. Why the hell are they the only ones who get to wear pajamas all day? I don't know why, but this feels racist. I believe that one day in the future, we will live in a society where we can wear scrubs at work, to school, and while at play. I have a dream of going to Howard's homecoming and seeing the cues stepping in camouflage scrubs with no shirts on. I dream that children will wear their designer scrubs on the first day of school and plumbers won't show their butt cracks because the elastic waistbands will hold their pants in place on their scrubs. I dream that one day little white boys and little white girls won't have to wear polos to places where they should be wearing tuxedos and little white girls won't have to wear Daisy Dukes that sag in the rear. I dream of an all scrubs society. Except that church. Jesus and my head deacon ain't having that bullshit. Thank you for watching the Grio. Remember to download the Grio app. Remember to subscribe and remember to tell one of your friends. And remember, if one of your friends has on something inappropriate, hit them with that old black saying. What are those? If you like what you heard, please give us a five-star review, download the Grio app, subscribe to the show, and share it with everyone you know. Please email all questions, suggestions, and compliments to podcasts at thegrio.com. You are now listening to the Grio's Black Podcast Network. Black Culture Amplified. Hey guys, it's Maisha Kai, lifestyle editor here at The Grill and your handy dandy Grammy nominee goddess next door, as I like to be known. Um, just so you know, your girl's not just behind the scenes editing and writing. I've also got a new podcast coming up every Sunday called Writing Black. We are launching on August 14th and we really hope you will join us. This is all about Black wordsmiths. That's what we do here. We are storytellers because it's The Grill.